Hey, guys, this is uh, Lewis, uh, this is Cameron. Uh, we're on Kingston's SSD team, and uh, welcome to our Hangout. Uh, we're going to talk about SSDs today, how easy they are to upgrade. But before we do all that, we want to show you this laptop over here. It is a ThinkPad, just kind of generic ThinkPad. comes with a hard drive. And one of the great things about SSDs is how it speeds up applications and boot time. So what we want to do is actually show you how long it takes to boot with a hard drive. We've got a little timer here. Go ahead, Cameron. Okay, we're going to turn it on here. All right, so we'll get that started. So it's going to take a couple minutes. You guys that have hard drives in your systems know, you know, boot times are kind of slow. That's kind of part of the of the deal. But you know, while we're doing that, um, yeah, Cameron, we can talk about the bundle, right? Sure. Talk about some of the stuff that uh, that we have with our SSDs. Okay, so we're, we're using Kingston's um, uh, notebook upgrade bundle today. And what these kits are designed to do is make it as easy as possible for the most non-technical user uh, to upgrade from a hard drive to a solid-state drive. And we put a lot of thought into this, um, and we've created this kit um, with the components you see here on the table uh, to make that process easy. So uh, the contents of the kit are uh, an external USB enclosure to house the old hard drive, a uh, USB cable to attach it to the system, of course, the, the new uh, Kingston solid-state drive, uh, a filler panel in case uh, uh, we need to accommodate different size drive base. And then kind of the key to this whole uh, uh, upgrade kit is the software that we include to uh, copy or clone all of your data from your existing hard drive over to your new SSD. Uh, there's also instructional videos uh, on this CD as well uh, to show you how uh, to do this upgrade. Um, but again, it's a, it's a very simple process, and we're going to walk through this after our system boots. Cool. Here. If you guys want to pan back to the laptop, so we booted Windows 7, right? In about, I think it was a minute 25, minute 30, we have a couple of applications already running in, in, the, in the startup. One of them is Picasa, and it'll be basically loading some pictures. You're going to see that right now. And the last one is just Photoshop, right? Probably a lot of you guys like to do things with Photoshop. I know I do. Um, it can be a little bit of a bear to load. And so what you're looking at right now, the OS is already booted. The Picasa app is coming up. There'll be some pictures in that library folder. Here they come. Uh, it's actually the Newport Beach wedge. It's kind of cool. And then after that, um, Photoshop will eventually come up. And if you can see here on the timer, yeah, we're at two minutes still. We're still not completely booted, right? We haven't booted that up. And so we'll use that kind of as a benchmark. After we clone with the SSD, we're going to time that again and see how long that takes. And so actually how short it takes, which is really kind of cool. So we're getting near the end of that, but yeah, go ahead, Cameron. Yeah, keep going about the, the bundle. Actually, what we do want to talk about the bundle is that you're going to get a chance to win, right? We've got two of these that we're giving away. Just like Cameron said, it's our V300. It's a great drive. It's our 120 gig, and it's the bundle kit. So all the stuff that you see here that Cameron talked about, you're going to be able to get, right? And so what we give you is everything that you need to clone your existing operating system and applications over um, to that. If Photoshop is still almost there. So let's take a look. Um, hang on one second. Let's see what this thing. I think it's probably right about to end. We just want to kind of gauge and get an accurate time. And uh, Cameron, while we're doing that, so we're at, we're at three. Okay, we can stop it there. So 257 is basically what it took. Um, I'm going to write that down so we kind of have a record of that. So HDD boot and apps was what? 257? Yep. Okay, 257. Okay, so we'll see how the SSD kind of helps that out at the end of this once we're cloned. So um, back to the bundle, right, and you guys get a chance to win. So what you want to do essentially is use a hashtag, um, hashtag Kingston Hangout, and we're going to announce the winners on Google Plus after the Hangout. So tweet about this Hangout. Um, we really appreciate it if you did that. And yeah, let's get started. And we'll talk about the, the rest of this. So what Cameron is going to do at this point is shut down the system. And he is going to um, go into the actual cloning process. And you're going to see how easy it really is. He'll be describing that. And uh, I'll kind of chime in a little bit. But it's basically, what do we say, like five or six mouse clicks. You know, and essentially the, the clone process takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depends on how much data you have. And, uh, and you'll see, it's really quick and easy. Um, and yeah, we'll talk more about that. So go ahead, Cam. Yep, so we're shutting down the system here. Um, yeah, and I think uh, to talk a little bit more about what Lewis is saying, I think that you know, some people think that you know, an SSD is a, is a pretty complicated upgrade. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we've done a, a pretty good job at, at making this, this easy. So yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if, if, you know, if, if, if you think uh, you know, this may be uh, 
technically challenging for you. We do have uh, free technical support that will walk you through this entire process. Yep. Um, There's a video on this, right? Yep. There's yep. a video on this right here. On that, our CD. Uh, to and I think you're actually in that video. I am, uh, I am on Is it you or just video? your hands? Uh, I think a couple shots of my face. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Good, good. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, power off the system here. So we want to take the uh, we want to take the battery pack out when we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the battery. Yeah, just being extra safe yep. there. Yeah. Try and remove the battery here. Okay, so we got the battery out. Uh, the hard drive in uh, notebooks are uh, typically located on uh, the back panel of the system. Uh, on this particular Lenovo, it's on the side. Uh, and typically, there's some sort of a supporting uh, bracketry for the uh, for the hard drive, yep. and we want to move uh, any of that supporting bracketry over to the SSD. Um, so in this particular case, it, it, it does have a bracket, uh, so we'll set that aside for right now. We're going to take the hard drive, and we are going to install it inside the USB enclosure. Uh, so in order to do the cloning, uh, we need to be able to attach the old hard drive to the system, and USB is the method to do that. So I'm going to close that, lock mm -hmm. it up. It's a it's a toolless case, so no screwdrivers are required. I'm going to plug my USB cable in now. I'm going to take my SSD. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, supporting bracket tree on here, and I don't need to use my filler panel in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and slide the SSD into the system. Make sure I'm sliding it the right way here. It's yeah, thank you. It's label up, I think. Label up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're used to looking at the system upside down. Yeah. Okay, we're going to slide this in. Okay, feels like we've made contact with a SATA connector. Now we are going to um, install our battery pack back on. Always good practice to uh, to take the battery out. I'm going to apply uh, power again here and bring the system up. I need to get my my uh, CD installed here because it is a bootable CD. Um, so I'm going to turn the system on quickly here, get the CD out, plugged in. I'll do a, con a quick control alt delete uh, to restart the system, and we're, we're going to we're going to boot to CD here. Cool. You know what? Let me add to you saw Cameron plug the power back in. You know it's really important that you have that power adapter right. Depending on the size of drive you have, it may take a little longer, and so you really want to make sure that um, you've got enough battery life. You know, to, to finish the clone, you don't want to be scratching for that power supply. You know, when you, you see that red light start to blink, so so make sure that um, we got a, a question already, which is really cool. So if uh, the question is, if I were to buy a standard three and a half inch SSD for the desktop, would that fit on my laptop perfectly? Well, I guess um, first of all, the SSDs that we sell are two and a half inch SATA. So yeah, you know, we know hard disks do come in three and a half inch and two and a half inch capacities. I mean, uh, form factors. Ours is a two and a half inch. In our desktop bundle, we actually sell, we include a two and a half to three and a half inch adapter. So you can plug that into uh, a drive bay, a drive carrier, anything that you have, you're able to adapt a two and a half to three and a half inch drive. So we really just sell the two and a half inch SATA, and you can put that in your desktop with our adapter, or you can put it in a laptop like we're doing right here. So you're okay either way. Okay, so the first step in the process, uh, we've, we've booted to our, our CD. Um, and we do support several languages. I'm going to select English here. English is good. Yep. <laughs> so we're bringing the system up here. It just takes a, a minute to kind of boot into uh, uh, the utility here. Did you talk about booting from the CD? Yeah, basically make sure that it's set up. Right. Yeah, we need to make sure that the, the BIOS is set up to boot from CD. Most systems uh, are set up to uh, boot from CD first. Mm -hmm. um, so in most cases, you wouldn't need to enter the BIOS to, to, m to make any changes. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we're at the, the, the initial screen here, and uh, we want to do a, a clone disk, uh, basically taking a carbon copy image of the hard drive and moving it over to the SSD. Okay, I'm going to select this. I'm going to select automatic mode. Um, this is the simplest mode to go if you're not going to manipulate the sizes of the partitions. Uh, we don't need to do manual mode, so let's just make this as easy as possible. I'm going to select next. 
and it's going to show uh, my source hard drive, uh, which is the, the hard drive that's in the uh, external USB enclosure. Uh, it recognizes it just fine there. It looks like we've got a 300 gig drive here. Uh, let's move to the next button here. Okay. Uh, and it does recognize our new uh, Kingston v, uh, V300 uh, solid state drive. So we're going to go down and we're going to uh, select the destination drive. How, how about it? just the fact that it's not initialized? I mean, that's how we ship it, right? Yeah, so we don't ship the drives formatted. Right, um, so if you've got a Mac or you've got Linux or whatever, yeah, the, the drive is empty. Right? It's, a, it's a raw device, basically. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I've selected my destination drive as my SSD. I'm going to hit Next. Okay, and then uh, it's going to show me uh, kind of a before and after layout of the drive. Currently, there's no data on the drive. Right. And after uh, we move the contents of the data, uh, we'll have uh, our partitions. Uh, it looks like this particular drive has a recovery partition on it, yeah. as well as the Windows partition. That's and what's really cool, right? Because we see a lot of notebooks and desktops now. When you buy a notebook, you don't get all the CDs and all that anymore, right? Just use your recovery partition. I think the beauty of our, our clone software is that it actually will take all of those partitions like you see there and move them over. So if for some reason you had to do a restore or restore your system back to kind of it was on day one, that that recovery partition is still on the SSD. So it makes yep. it easy. It's yep. actually faster. Yeah. So all of that moves over. Um, so on the summary screen here, it's just kind of validating what, what we're doing here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit proceed and it will start uh, the cloning process and, and we're, we're off and running here. Okay, good, good. So that's going to take, you know, depending on how much data you have, you know, I think in this case we're moving maybe about 30 or 40 gigs yep. over, so it'll be about 15 to 20 minutes, I think. Um, you know, it's, if you buy our larger SSDs, the 256 or, or the, the 480s, and you're moving three or 400 gigs, it, it could take a while. And that's why you kind of mentioned earlier, have your, your battery um, fully charged and have that, that power yep. around there, yeah, just so you can yep. accommodate that clone time. But that's really it. So while this is going on, we're not going to, bore you guys watching the, the clone software kind of work. Um, you know, we'll just go ahead and, and uh, we can look at some questions and also just kind of talk about things in general uh, regarding SSD. So I know we've already mentioned you guys get a chance to win one of these, so that's very cool, two of these actually, so uh, make sure that you take a look at that. You'll see that pop up on the screen. Um, let me see. I think one, of, one of the, I, real quick, ahead. Lewis, yeah, I think one of the uh, questions that comes up a lot um, when we're talking with customers is, you know, can I clone from a larger hard drive to yep. a lower capacity SSD? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, the software is set up uh, uh, to be able to do that. You just want to make sure you've got enough capacity on the new SE, SSD uh, to accommodate the amount of data you have. I mean, obviously, if you've got more data than you've got capacity of the That's SSD, right. then we need to move, you know, some of that right. data off uh, before we do the clone. But yeah, definitely. I mean, you can go from a uh, you know a one terabyte, you know, five hundred gig right. a hard drive to a lower capacity SSD and still right. do all this. Uh, right. This. And the beauty of the software is it'll tell you that you yeah. don't have enough room. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you'll actually get a warning. You just won't go ahead and do it. So we got another cool question. Um, an older notebook would that benefit from an SSD? Yeah, actually it will. Um, you know, I know netbooks are a little underpowered. You know, you're probably cruising some Atom processor. I know netbooks can be a little pokey. You know, uh, we've done lots of netbook upgrades. Um, it, you know, depending on which one, it may take a little doing to get it where the hard drive is. But yeah, definitely, um, I would say a netbook, uh, an SSD actually makes a netbook very usable. And so if you still have one, you know, as long as there's a two and a half inch socket, you know, in that netbook, um, and it's SATA one, two, or three, yeah, you can definitely upgrade with our SSDs, and you'll like it a lot better. I know, you know, cool that you have one. Um, you know, and they're still great. Um, you know, I, I like them. Um, but um, an SSD definitely makes it a little more usable, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we sell uh, not only to the consumer space, but also to uh, the corporate space as well, and we see a lot of our customers that are extending the life of older systems mm -hmm. uh, by simply moving to a solid-state drive. So, um, you know, the beauty of serial ATA is it's, it's backward compatible. So yeah. systems that were built, you know, really in the last eight years, yeah. Can use uh, the SSDs that we're shipping today. Yeah, so. and even an SSD running at SATA one speed still stomps a hard drive. Oh yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's you still get quicker boots. So we got another cool question here. Um, how does a cloning software handle different drive sizes? Will my partitions be resized automatically? Yeah, they will actually. Now I, I think there are times, and Acronis is actually a pretty good tool about this. What you saw Cameron demo was automatic mode, but in in manual mode, you can actually resize some of those partitions yourself. So I think the thing to look at is sometimes on the recovery partitions, they need to be a certain size. 
you can do that manually. We've done that with some yeah. old ThinkPads, you know, in, in the past. So the answer um, to you, Jeff, am I allowed to call Jeff out? Um, is that uh, is that yeah? They they will resize automatically, but we give you the option to manually resize if needed. So and yeah. you, you might need that from time to time. Cool. So lots of questions coming in. This is good. Uh, another one, will this work on Windows 8 and 8.1? Uh, Cameron, you want to take that one? Sure, yeah. So um, is the, so uh, the software compatible with mm -hmm. the new versions of Windows 8? Okay, yes. so, uh, so yeah. So um, yeah, the, the latest versions of uh, uh, Windows 8 are supported with our cloning software. Mm -hmm. um, so just like the process you saw here with our, our Windows 7 machine, um, it, it's going to be the same process with Windows 8. Yeah, yeah, and you know, um, Windows 8 itself you know, does support you know SATA, right? SATA SSDs, and so SATA hard drives and SSDs as well. So Windows 8 with an SSD is actually really nice. You know, it's really snappy. So for you Windows 8 users and guys going to 8.1 now, um, yeah, definitely uh, SSDs are going to make your life easier, just like it would with the rest of the Windows operating systems. Uh, will these utilities work on a Mac? Um, Unfortunately, and I'm sorry, unfortunately no, but what's cool about the Mac, because I'm actually a Mac user, I've got a MacBook uh, 2010 that I really, really like. Um, you can use, there, there are a number of free utilities out there. The one that I, could, I would say are both super duper and carbon copy. Carbon copy is the one that I prefer. You can download that for free and use that one as well. It's pretty easy, and the process is almost identical to what we're doing here, except you run the clone from within the operating system. It's a pretty simple process. It goes fast. And you can use our adapter, so the same, you know, the same two and a half inch adapter, uh, USB to SAT adapter that we're doing, you can use that as well. Um, you would just basically download one of the one of the cloning softwares as well. If you're using Mac OS pre 10.8, right? So if you've got something a little older, you can actually use the recovery utility in Disk Utility to do that as well. It's uh, basically a restore, a backup and a restore, and uh, you're able to do that. So it's really quick, and yeah, you know, for you guys, the, the Mac users out there. SSDs really rock on a Mac. It's probably my favorite operating system with SSDs. Um, yeah, the Mac OS is really, really quick. We, we like it. Thanks, Lynn. Oh, can an SSD help my game run faster? They will help you get into your game faster, right? So if we're talking, God, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of a gamer. I like the driving games of Dirt 3s and games like that. Um, you're not going to be able to kill anyone any faster, unfortunately, but definitely load times um, in the original boot of the game are going to go quicker, and also load times between levels, right? So when you get done with the level, right, and that, and that next map is loading up, that next map is going to load up quicker with an SSD. So gameplay, not so much, but game boot and game time, which is nice. And, you know, to me it's a big deal. I think with the advances in gaming, you know, the, the 3D, I mean, gaming is a really immersive experience, you know? I mean, you really kind of get into it. And if you've got to slow down and wait, you know, when you're done with that level and wait another minute or two for that next level to load, it kind of takes away from that. Yeah. So for me, SSDs are great with gaming. All right. Lots of questions, guys. We really appreciate this. Go ahead, Cameron. You want this one? Uh, sure. I need to replace my uh, desktop SSD. Will this be okay to replace it? Yeah, definitely. So um, uh, whether you've got a, a notebook or a desktop, um, Lewis mentioned earlier that uh, we sell a, a notebook version of this kit as well as a uh, desktop version of this kit. And really the only difference between the, the, the two kits is um, is that adapter bracket to adapt the 2.5-inch SSD um, to accommodate a 3.5-inch drive bay. So, uh, yeah, so we do have a desktop version of this as well. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, still more coming in. So, oh, the camera. Sorry, this is, uh, sorry, this is right up your alley. Cameron's kind of our RAID specialist. So, so uh, our SSE is good with RAID. Uh, are there any RAID configurations that are not supported in an enterprise environment? So, um, we always say you can use an SSD uh, just like you use a hard drive, and that does apply to the uh, to the world of of, of RAID and RAID controllers. Um, RAID controllers are are great for uh, adding performance to your storage. Uh, and redundancy. Uh, so with an SSD, you know, if, if we're getting 500 megabytes a second out of uh, out of a single drive, and we put that drive into a RAID zero stripe uh, with two drives, you can, you can expect to get twice that performance, which would be a thousand megabytes a second. Um, How about like in enterprise, right? You got RAID 10, right? It's a popular one. RAID 5. Yep. So all, all of those are supported. Um, the, the latest generation of controllers from the top controller suppliers. Mm -hmm 
are uh, are supporting SSDs now uh, more than they ever have. Um, so we're seeing not only great performance but great compatibility uh, with SSDs. And yeah, a lot of our SSDs are used uh, behind RAID controllers. So really, no limits in terms of uh, of use with with RAID. Okay. Um, just you're going to get great performance out of uh, adding uh, multiple drives to uh, to a RAID array. You're working on a series of videos right now, right? That'll be on our website. Yep, our HyperX uh, uh, for our HyperX uh, team. So we're uh, we're talking a lot about RAID. Uh, we're talking about RAID zeros, RAID fives, RAID tens, uh, RAID one mirroring, mm -hmm. um, and how SSDs perform in those different RAID configurations. So I, even adding that, you know, we see companies like LSI now that are actually putting in special SSD features, right, yep. into their into their cards. Yep, their firmware is designed for SSD, so it'll it'll detect an SSD and it'll change the characteristics of, right. of their firmware because you know an SSD performs very differently than a hard drive. Yeah. And so we want to, uh, you know, make those 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 slight changes, which make big uh, uh, changes to performance. But CES last year, right? We, you you built a, a Hunkin SSD RAID yeah, demo, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, we took a pair of LSI's latest uh, generation uh, host controllers, yeah. uh, no RAID, just yeah. straight uh, HBAs, and we uh, attached 16 of our HyperX SSDs to that. Just 16. Just, yeah. yeah, just 16. <laughs> yeah. We did a uh, RAID zero stripe in Windows across those 16 drives. And we got over 6,000 megabytes a second read and write. Right. So that's pretty um, cool. And PCI Express 3.0 kind of made that possible. Right. So, so Robin, for asking that question, 6,000 megabytes a second, right? You can yeah. do that. So it's doable. Cool. Thanks, guys. We appreciate yeah. the questions. Um, what's the difference between an enterprise level SSD versus consumer besides price? Well, Lynn, yeah, price is definitely the first one. I would say the biggest thing. Is, is really kind of two things. There are some enterprise features that we will add on to our enterprise SSDs. The biggest one is power fail, right? So um, we, when we first launched SSDs in the market, we started with more of a consumer line, you know, kind of mainstream. As we got serious about the enterprise market, one thing our customers wanted was some type of power fail protection. So on our E50 and E100 enterprise SSDs, we have power fail. There's a series of tantalum capacitors on there, and should there be an unsafe power drop, you know, in power to that server, the SSD, actually, the controller we use has enough intelligence to detect that power drop. It'll disconnect from input power and fail over to the capacitors and allow it kind of a graceful shutdown, right? Any data that's in transit will be hardened to flash, you know, and the drive will shut down nicely, essentially. So, yeah, I would say that's one thing. The other thing is really endurance, right? And so when we talk about enterprise SSDs, we're going from writing, you know, gigabytes a day to terabytes a day, right, depending on that application. And so we have in our series, uh, the E100 SSD, for example, we use 30,000 um, enterprise level MLC. We're talking, I think we can write a total of near 15 petabytes to the 400 gig yep. drive. So endurance is probably, endurance and power fill are probably the two main differentiators, Lynn, between, a, between an enterprise level. So when we're talking about the V300 in our bundle here, there is no power fail on that, right? We don't we don't put capacitors on there, and we're using commercial grade 3K NAND. So while the drive is very fast, it's really not meant to be put into a server where I'm going to write petabytes of data to. It's really more of a consumer workload. But thanks, thanks for that. I feel like we're doing a news show, like yeah. Larry King or something. It's kind of cool. I um, want to remind you guys, again, that we are giving this away. So um, we want to tweet about this Hangout, right, uh, to enter. Just want to use. Hashtag Kingston Hangout, and we're going to announce the winners on Google Plus right after we're done. So hopefully you guys are entering, and two of these are pretty cool. Um, I think it's great. Um, you know, for those of you guys that are kind enough to kind of tune in and kind of sit here with us, um, you know, you'll see. I mean, life with an SSD is just much better. We're going to show you quicker boot times, applications opening up faster. Your battery life's going to be better. You know, we're talking about anywhere from like 30 minutes to one hour more battery life, which is a big deal. As much as we travel when I'm on the plane. That's finishing the second movie, right? Yeah, Essentially, yeah. yeah. Especially if the onboard movie is no good. Uh, do SSDs need to be t cooled? So we got a question from Twitter. Actually, no. Um, to be honest, they run really cool as is. You know, a hard drive. You know, if I can kind of show you, right? This is what a hard drive looks like, right? I mean, we've got disk that spin. Um, I can't show you the motor that's underneath this, but um, a hard drive's got a lot of. It, it's kind of really power hungry. And there's also just a lot of things happening in here, a lot of mechanical things. That's going to generate heat. SSDs, you know, they will run a little warm, but never beyond the point where you have to worry about cooling them. You know, I would say ambient temperature is important. You know, if, if these are in a box up on a flagpole in Death Valley, yeah, yeah the whole box is going to get a little hot, right? And, you know, I would say 
they, they shouldn't be cooled any more than you would need to cool the system itself, yep. right? Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. Got another one? Uh, go ahead, Kim. So is uh, is read speed of an SSD more important than the write speed? I, I think it depends on, on kind of how you're using the SSD. Um, one of the great uh, benefits of, of SSD is a, uh, a lack of mechanical latency, which is which is huge. And I don't think a lot of people really recognize that with hard drives. They look at the kind of the speeds and feed specs, you know, the total megabytes per second. Yeah. Uh, but one of the, the 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 big advantages that we're getting from SSD is that lack of mechanical latency, yeah. where that read write arm uh, has to go out. And, and read that data, right? And we, we pretty much uh, eliminate um, um, any latencies associated with seek time with with SSDs. So um, I would say they, they they both benefit both reads and writes. But I think where you're getting a a, a big jump in performance over a hard drive right. is in that write performance. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, I think that um, uh, you know it, it's literally. You know this term gets used a lot. That the night and day difference. You yeah. know, an SSD yeah. is is one of the single most significant upgrades you can make to a computer today, and uh, it's helping in, in in both the read and write scenario. Yeah, I mean, you know, I showed you guys this picture right earlier, right? This is a hard drive, right? And you know, essentially, you know, data is recorded magnetically. You know, this actuator arms are actually can make it move a little bit. Are going to move back and forth across the surface of that disk. That takes time, right? Um, you know, when when you have you know the latest you know, laptop, Core i7 mobile, you got Kingston RAM in there hopefully, right? And then you've got a hard drive. This is the slowest thing in the chain. This is really what yeah. you're waiting on at this point. So we're really, if we can speed this up, we're actually letting your processor do what it's supposed to do, right? We're just getting data into RAM quicker so that the processor can do what it's supposed to do faster, essentially. You don't have your processor waiting around for that, you know, the instructions of that program, be it Photoshop or a game, to load into RAM and then to go. So yeah. I think that's really the biggest thing. So yeah, I mean, to that that question, I mean, I, I would say they're both equally important, right? Yeah. Random read is what makes your system boot yeah. quickly, yeah. Right, essentially. So, and I think with most SSDs, you'll see really, really good random read performance in it and random write. Yeah, and and then the other thing, you know, I think to to, to put some perspective on on uh, on bandwidth performance uh, with SSD compared to hard drive, you know, we're getting about with the latest generation of hard drives that are in the marketplace about 100 megabytes a second out of right. the drive. Uh, with a, a port that's a, a capable of 600 megabytes a second. Yeah. And right. with an SSD, you know, we're almost fully saturating that port at over 500 megabytes a second. So yeah. it, it, it's many times faster um, uh, than a hard drive. And if you get into IOPS, right, IOPS, you know, this this hard drive, right, is capable, this is an old hard drive, but capable of about, what, two to 300 you know, IOPS, you know, SSD IOPS are measured in the tens of thousands, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, our, our SSDs, we're talking, if we're talking read IOPS, even the V300, we're in the 60 or 70,000 random read IOPS, right? Yeah, off a single drive. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I mean, you would need to stack up, yeah, I don't know, hundreds, two, three hundred of these yeah. to actually equate the random performance of one SSD. So, good question. Thank yeah. you, Steven. All right, one more. Is it true it's not recommended to use Windows defragmenter software on SSDs? Yeah, it is, Richard. Actually, that's a great question. So we know that, you know, again, using our hard drive example, right, when data gets stored on, actually, you can't really see it, but there's multiple platters on this hard drive. When I've got data on multiple platters and I need to assemble that data, right, I mean, hard drives are going to fragment. That's just how they work, right? Data is not going to be able to be written contiguously over and over and over again. When that data needs to be reassembled is when is when it takes time, right? And we know that you know what, what most people will do is run defrag, and all defrag is doing is taking your fragmented data and basically recopying it into a contiguous thing, and it helps as hard drive performance up to a point. With SSDs, you don't want to do that. Actually, fragmentation is part of the normal way SSD works. Um, the way the controller writes to the NAND flash, there's going to be some fragmentation. That's completely okay. You know, as Cameron mentioned earlier. We're like near zero seek times on yeah. this, right? So latency is not a big deal. Um, you want your drive to actually be fragmented. It helps us wear the drive out more evenly. There's a feature on there called wear leveling that maybe some of you have heard about. What we want to do is wear the flash out evenly, and, and fragmentation is a part of that. So say no to defrag. Don't defrag. Uh, if you do, um, you know what you'll find is essentially you're just uh, performing excessive writes on your SSD, yep. which you really don't want to do. Yep. So. You know, I think our clone actually is almost done. Yep, we just got a few more seconds yeah. here, and we'll be uh, ready to see the difference here. So we'll see. We have a little countdown here. Sometimes the Cronus will kind of lie to us, though, right? It'll say eight or nine seconds. 
So, you know, one thing on SSDs, you know, when we first started, you know, actually we can leave that there for a second. When we first started with SSDs, Cameron and I went and talked, and, you know, our first SSD customers were corporate, right? Yeah. And, you know, we would get through, and Cameron and I would tell you about how great SSDs are and quicker boot times and 80,000 IOPS. And, and, they would, the price. and then they would say, how much is it? And we go, oh, 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 oh. and they what? You know, and that, that's more than the whole laptop, Lewis. And we're like, yeah. And so, um, you know, back then, this was four or five years ago, that's how it was. You know, SSDs now are sub a dollar a gig. And, and I remember customers, I'll buy when it gets to two dollars a gig, right? And we, we did see that level, actually, where SSD interest, you know, kind of peaked up. And I think at the consumer level, once we got to a dollar gig and sub dollar gig, is when we really saw performance take off, right? So, I mean, we really saw a, a lot of updates. So the V300 is our number one selling drive. We do a ton of these, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're talking about, you know, when you get into upgrading this, right? So this is a, a ThinkPad. Um, I did see a question earlier on. Someone was asking about the specs. It's a T430s. We have a Core i5 in here, so giving an idea. It's not a really old laptop. It's actually, I think, it's last year's ThinkPad, right? Yep. Yeah, generation ThinkPads. I believe it's Ivy Bridge even. Um, so um, when when it comes to that, God, I forgot where I was going. <laughs> pricing. Yeah, pricing. Yeah, what you know, you're really faced with. You know, most time when you upgrade a notebook is why, right? It's, it's too slow. Right. It takes too long to boot, right? What we're suggesting is, you know what? Rather than go out and spend eight, nine hundred, you know, dollars on on the latest, whatever, the, the, the latest laptop, right? Ultrabook or what have you, you know, spend a hundred dollars, right? Essentially on our bundled kit. And you know, take what you have and make it go faster, essentially, yeah. which is what we're going to demo, right? And so for sub one hundred dollars, you've got a better than new laptop. Yeah, right? we're taking everything that you've got, all your programs, movies, music, all that's being copied over. You're not going to have to re-enter software keys, any of that. You can just kind of go fresh and, and start from there. So yeah. why don't we why don't we see how we did? Okay, on the reboot. And so, so our, go ahead, Cameron. Our clone is done here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and hit OK. I'm going to pop that CD. I'm going to take the CD out. Oops. Okay, I'm going to escape ahead. out. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Use to reboot. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and reboot. I'm going to take the CD out because I want to boot from my hard drive. I'm going to unplug the, I'm gonna unplug the USB cable. I got it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, restart the machine here. Okay. So we're just going to turn it off and then turn it back on. Okay. okay. All right, so let's go. Tell me where you're going. Okay, I'm going to push the button. Go. Okay. Ah. There we go. All right. That's a little slow there. So let's see how we do. So you'll see we're getting into the OS super quick here, right? So it took us about a minute 20 to get into the operating system. And let's see where we are. Yeah, you can see it's going much, much quicker for you guys that tuned in. The cost is already up. That's 20 seconds, 17. We're not even 20 seconds yet, and we're up. So 22, call it 23 seconds, essentially, is what it took, right? Um, that's not bad, right? Versus so, 257, yeah, almost three minutes. Let's kind of see how that, uh, that looks there, right? 23 seconds, you know, versus three minutes, right? That's not bad. What could you do with another two minutes and 20 seconds, right? <laughs> For you guys that, you know, have laptops and, you know, you can use your... Excuse to go get your coffee and everything else. Yeah, you can't, really can't do that anymore with SSD. So, kind of cool. I mean, we saw 20, 20 something seconds, and um, actually, this is good that we got this this uh, message. You might want to talk about that, Cameron. Okay. So yeah. So um, uh, the system will recognize that a new hardware device has been added, uh, and to uh, accept those changes, we just want to uh, restart the system, which is completely normal. Um, so once you do this upgrade, you're gonna you're gonna see this uh, this uh, little dialog box come up. Uh, so we're gonna apply the changes. We're gonna restart the system now, and then on the next boot up, we won't get that message. It, it yeah. will, will have updated its 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 uh, log there, and um, it'll function uh, just as normal. Another thing you can do actually is Windows comes with a performance test, right? Mm -hmm. uh, WinSat, right? Yeah. And so if you want, you can rerun WinSat, you know, under Control Panel. And your your disk basically your performance should go anywhere from probably with a hard drive is like 5.8, 5.9, all the way to 7.9, which is yep. the maximum. So you know at that point you're getting kind of maximum performance. So another quick boot that was pretty yeah. cool actually. Yep, yeah, we're up faster than I, yeah, I thought it would be. And we didn't get our message again, so we're uh, we're ready to go there. Very cool. So I'm, I'll I'm go ahead and shut down. Not or... too shabby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we got a question from uh, from Twitter. What was that again? I'm sorry. So that question was upcoming storage sizes. So our drives right now, the V300 is in the 61, 22, 40 sizes. 
We're going to be adding a 480 gig in about three weeks, I believe. We'll be shipping it actively, so half a terabyte, which is kind of cool. And if we're kind of moving beyond that, and that's where our, our drives are, our sizes, right? Whether it's our enterprise drive, our, our MSATA drives, we, we're up to about 480 gig is where we are. As we get um, into our next generation controllers, probably in the Q2 time frame next year, we'll be making a terabyte available, which is really cool. So for you guys that have a terabyte hard drives and all that kind of data and you know movies and music and everything else, you know we'll be able to we'll be able to ship a terabyte SSD. Um, so you won't have to make those decisions about what to clone over and whatnot, yeah. right? If you've got too much data, so it's amazing. I mean, how much data that we create in a day? Oh yeah. And no one deletes anything anymore, yeah. right? You just buy a bigger hard drive, right? And so I think, uh, which is great. I'm sure the hard drive industry loves it, but um, yeah, I think for with us, we'll be able to kind of creep up on that. So we're at a half terabyte now, and we'll be going to terabyte next yeah. year, which is really cool, I think. Yeah. And I think one of the other things we want to mention is uh, yeah. you can still use your old hard drive, right? Yep. So um, we've we've got the new SSD in the notebook. Mm -hmm. We're running real fast. Now not only do we have a, a, a carbon copy image on the old hard drive, yep. Uh, we can also use this old hard drive as an external uh, mass storage device. So uh, we we still make it so that you can use the, your your old hard drive. Yeah, you, you don't, don't have to, to throw it away. Yeah, yeah. we see, we, you don't have to eat it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it can be used still for backup things like that if you've got any backups. You know, I think that's an important point too. One of the things that we talked about is, hey, SSDs are so durable, they're so fast. I don't need to back up anymore. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do not do that, right? Whatever you guys are using to back up at home, right, whether it's a NAS or whether it's, like, you know, an external drive, continue to do that, right? Um, you know, nothing is infallible, right? We know that OS is, you know, anything can happen, essentially. And so while SSDs, you know, our, our, uh, our return rate is very, very, very small. You know, we do really, really well with that. You know, um, nothing is perfect. And so whether it's the enterprise guys or the consumer, do not go away from your standard kind of redundancy backup kind of things. And so, so one of the things that um, we get asked about is kind of where to buy these, right? And so um, if you go to our website, kingston.com slash SSD, uh, there will be a where to buy section. And you can find the kind of retailer, e-tailer close to you. We like Amazon, right? Uh, God, Amazon sells just about everything. everything. Now, you know, I actually bought a surfboard through Amazon, and I had it shipped to my cousins in Hawaii wow. for free, free shipping, which is kind of cool. It was cheaper than shipping my own board. Amazon's great, and so, um, you know, that's one that uh, that we like a lot. Um, it's great, too. You know what, what's cool about that, especially the e-tails, is the reviewer community. Yeah. You know, so you see people posting reviews, their own experiences with SSDs and products, and so I like that. So we have a last call to win this bundle right here, right? So, um, again, we're giving away two of these. Maybe we'll autograph them, but that might be that would devalue <laughs> that, them. Yeah. yeah, we won't autograph them. Yeah, let's not do that. And again, tweet about the hangout right to enter. Use hashtag Kingston Hangout. And uh, again, we will announce these uh, right after. Another cool thing about the hangout is that this is being recorded on video, right? So you guys that missed it essentially, or maybe you got in a little late, there'll be a hangout archive the sessions on our YouTube channel, Kingston Tech Memory, all in one thing. We got some cool videos on there. Actually, we did some. Early on, some destructive videos where we decided to test how uh, indestructible SSDs were, and we hit them with golf clubs and baseball bats and set them on fire and threw them off buildings, dragged them behind cars, all kinds of stuff. So you can see that kind of stuff up there as well. So, um, yeah, really what you want to do is subscribe to that channel, right? So as we post new updates, Cameron mentioned he's going to have his um, raid and hyper rating of hyper yeah. SSDs, kind of a tutorial slash demo. Um, it'd be really cool. You'll get updated, and you'll able to kind of see what our latest and greatest is. And we like to do things on video. We're even talking about maybe a, the next series of Destructo, right? And so if you guys have any ideas, we'd be more than happy to entertain what we want to do. I really want to throw an SSD out of the airplane, like a laptop and everything out of the yeah. airplane. Or so a hot air balloon. Hot air balloon. See if yeah. we can get someone to kind of help us with that. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got another question. How long is the lifetime of an SSD from uh, Caesar? You know, it really it really depends, right? I guess if we're talking about just this drive, right? So this drive is using 3,000 PE cycle NAND, right? And really, when it comes to lifetime, what's going to limit the SSD's lifetime is is whether you exhaust the endurance, right? So when we talk about, I was talking about that 400 gig enterprise drive that we have that we can write about 15 terabytes to. Chances are, you know, the SSD itself with no moving parts is going to last a long time. Our MTBF, our mean time between failures, like a million hours, right? Yeah, yeah. So chances are, uh, Caesar, the, the host, the notebook or, or desktop that you put this in is probably going to wear out before the SSD will essentially, right? And so, you know, we've been in the business five years now. 
you know, we're not seeing returns on our original product even at this point. And so SSDs, the, the, the data endurance is pre pretty much would be the limiting factor. And again, if you're talking about writing, we say the normal consumer workload is 20 to 30 gigabytes a day. You know, you're talking four or five years easy, you know, yeah. of, of life on that, right? And so and maybe in an extreme situation, you know, uh, you know, if you're writing terabytes a day, you know, I could see maybe the SSD not lasting as long, but it, it's it's not the it's it, the question is kind of depends on you and your own workload. So yeah, and I think that um, you know we, we understand the the the, the common. Uh, client workload, yeah. what you and I and, and most users do on a computer every day, mm -hmm. and um, when you when you look at how much data we're writing, uh, you know not only what we save to our computer every day, but what's the operating system doing in the background when it writes to the drive. Right. Um, we understand that really well, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we really see for a typical client workload, right. uh, endurance really not being an issue. The, yeah. the useful life of, of of your of your laptop or your or your desktop machine. Um, is going to uh, expire before the SSD wears out. Cool. So yeah, we talked about that. I think one of the nice things is that you, you know, along with how easy it is to clone, you know, this Lenovo probably in a couple of years I'm going to want to replace it, right? Do I have to throw away the SSD? No, you can still use it. Yeah, I mean, chances are there's lots of endurance left. We have tools that we that we ship with the driver. You can download that you can actually query the life the life left on that SSD. So if I'm at 50% plus or probably more, there's no reason why I have to throw that away, right? Reclone. We know yep. whatever if I upgraded the, the you know the, the next ThinkPad or the, the next uh, Apple, uh, the, the next MacBook, just reclone and, and keep going, right? I don't have to eat that SSD. So. Yeah, the serial ATA interface isn't going anywhere no, uh, anytime no. soon. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. All right, we've got one more question. Thanks, guys, for this. You really are active out there. So, uh, Nils, would I not benefit more from a reinstall of the OS? I heard there's some switches and settings in Windows that is different on a PC running an SSD over an HDD. You know, it, it's a good question. I think a reinstall is never a bad thing. You know, I mean, in terms of, you know, just in general to your operating system, God, the registry gets so bloated, right? I mean, if you've got a lot of software, you've downloaded demos and things like that. I know I do. You know, a reinstall is always a good thing. I would say, you know, either way, um, with, with an SSD in this case, you know, it's almost a toss-up. You know, the, the clone makes it easy. You know, if you don't mind doing a reinstall and reinstalling your applications, you know, if you have your software keys, all that good stuff, we just try to make it easy with the bundle. I, I think a reinstall is fine. I wouldn't say, though, that it would benefit. Um, yes, there are some switches. Windows 7 and 8 do a pretty good job of detecting whether there's an SSD there, right? And there's things like the trim command that gets sent, things like that. Um, you know that one. That one's a tough one. I, I would say it's almost a coin flip. Um, you know, I, I think the clone's great. Um, if you have the patience, you know, and the know-how, and you don't mind doing a reinstall, you know, that would be good as well. I would say that would benefit more from a fresh OS install anyway. So even if I had a hard drive, I would still say a fresh OS install just to get that registry cleaned yeah. out, everything nice and kind of new. I mean, Windows, you know, can be a little bit of a pig when it comes to as an OS, right? It, there's a lot of bloat to it. And so an install will kind of help with that. So hopefully that answers your question. We have one here. So um, if we didn't get to your question, right, and there was lots of them, thank you, we'll reply on Google+, Plus, right? Uh, you know, we're really stoked that you guys joined us. This is our first one. We're hoping to do some more. But thanks for joining us, and we'll be back with other topics uh, really soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right.